Right, so this is going to be a pretty chill lecture because for the most part it's just building on ideas that we've already established. So this is higher order linear ODEs. Or at least that's what the title in the textbook is. Uh, again, it really should say higher order linear ODEs with constant coefficients that are homogeneous. <laughs> um, but maybe that would have been too long of a title. In any case, uh, before we get started, let's just recall a theorem that I referred to several times as Stolch. Solution Theorem for Linear Homogeneous ODEs. So this says that if you have a linear homogeneous ODE with, uh, with no, it doesn't have to have constant coefficients, but, uh, but if you have a linear homogeneous ODE uh, and it's nth order, and you have n many linearly independent solutions, then the general solution is just all the linear combinations of those. Okay, for today, or um, in, in the past, we always had this uh, order being two. Uh, today, it's going to be more than two. That's it. <laughs> uh, and the procedure is the same. You find the characteristic equation, and based on that, you construct n many linearly independent solutions, and then the general solution is just all the linear combinations of those. Okay. So there's nothing to do but examples. Let's suppose we're going to try to find the general solution of third derivative of y minus the second derivative plus the first derivative minus y equals 0. So we haven't dealt with something like that before because that's third order and we've only dealt with second order so far. But trust me, it's the same stuff. Um, because again, you plug in the guess y equals e to the rx. And then this becomes r cubed e to the rx minus r squared e to the rx plus r e to the rx minus e to the rx equals zero. Factor out e to the rx, r cubed minus r squared plus r minus r e to the rx now equals zero. And then again, e to the rx is never zero. So then that means that r cubed minus r squared plus r minus r has to be zero. And that is the characteristic equation, which again, you don't need to show all this work for that. You can just go from here to here. That's fine. Oh wait, I just realized uh, I messed that up. This shouldn't be minus r, this should be minus one. Sorry about that. Anyway, you can always just go from here to here and I won't take off points. Okay, so just as before, we just need to figure out the roots of the characteristic equation and go from there. And if they're real and distinct, well, that's very lucky. That gives us enough uh, linearly independent solutions as we need. If they are repeated, then we're going to have to do that thing where we multiply by x. And if they are non-real, then we're going to have to use Euler's formula. So let's see how it works here. Well, this one could be factored as r squared times r minus 1 plus r minus 1 equals 0. That can then be factored as r squared plus 1 times r minus 1 equals 0. Now, uh, this polynomial has three roots. It only has one real root, namely 1. So it has r1 
which is 1. But then r squared plus 1 uh, equals 0. That's the same as saying r squared equals negative 1. Or in other words, r equals plus or minus i. So we have two more roots, i and negative i. And again, we don't really need to concern ourselves with the fact that there is more than just i. Like, the, the i is going to give us all the information that we need. Okay? But in any case, we have one real root. So that gives us one solution that looks like e to the x. Similarly, if you take e to the r2 times x, well, that would be e to the ix. According to Euler's formula, that is the same as cosine x plus i times the sine of x. And so then, again, you pick out the real and imaginary parts, just like in the previous lecture. Call those y2 and y3. And then we have three linearly independent solutions of our ODE. Which is great, because we have order three. And so according to uh, Stolch, the general solution is just going to be all the linear combinations of e to the x and cosine x. Or uh, this should be c2, cosine x and sine x. And that's that. OK. So not very much different uh, from what we previously did. The only difference now is it's a higher or um, it's a higher degree polynomial that you're going to have to factor, which I recognize that's not always easy, and therefore I'm only going to give you easy ones to factor. Um, but the same thing applies. You find the roots and then construct basis solutions based on those roots. Okay. So, of course, let's do another example. This one is fourth derivative of y minus five third derivative of y plus 6 second derivative of y equals 0. OK. So as always, we find the characteristic equation. In this case, that's going to look like r to the fourth minus 5r cubed plus 6r squared equals 0. And then we can start factoring that. We have a common factor of r squared in all of these terms, so we can factor that out. We have r squared times r squared minus 5r plus 6 equals 0. And then we can factor this too, right? This factors into r minus 2, r minus 3. So we have r squared r minus 2, r minus 3, equals 0. So, we have three roots, 0, 2, and 3. And this, this root at 0 is repeated. We say it has multiplicity, algebraic multiplicity 2. Okay? So, our three roots are r1, which is 0, with an algebraic multiplicity of 2. We have r2, which is 2, which has an algebraic multiplicity of 1. And we have r3, which is 3, and that has an algebraic multiplicity of 1. The algebraic multiplicity should be understood as the exponent in the factorization. Okay. So in this case here, we have r minus 0 to the 2. So 2 is the algebraic multiplicity. 
we have r minus 2 to the 1, so 1 is the algebraic multiplicity of 2. Okay? So, this gives us three different solutions. We have y1, which is e to the 0x, which I'm pretty sure is just 1. We also have y2, which is e to the 2x, and y3, which is e to the 3x. And then that's not enough. That's not enough because according to Stolch, we need four linearly independent solutions because this is a fourth order ODE. So that's fine. We do what we always do when we have repeated roots of uh, the characteristic equation. Just multiply the solution that you get by x. So y4 is just going to be x times 1, so that's x. And so uh, now we have four linearly independent solutions. So the general solution is going to be c1 plus c2x plus c3e to the 2x plus c4e to the 3x. And that's our general solution. Okay. Why don't we do another? This one is third derivative of y plus 2 times the second derivative of y plus 2 times the first derivative of y equals 0. So again, we find the characteristic equation that looks like r cubed plus 2r squared plus 2r equals 0. We notice we can factor out an r. So we get r times r squared plus 2r plus 2 equals 0. Now, this thing is irreducible. You can tell because b squared minus 4ac is negative. So first of all, we have r equals 0. But we also have r squared plus 2r plus 2 equals 0. Quadratic formula. So r equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a this is 4 minus 8 which is just negative 4 so this is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 divided by 2 that turns into uh, let's see here negative 1 plus or minus i Right, because the square root of 4 is 2, and then 2 divided by 2 would just be 1. So we have 1i. Okay, so we have three roots of our characteristic equation. One is real, the other two are non-real. So the one that's real gives rise to a real-valued solution y1 equals e to the 0x, which of course is just 1 again. As for the other ones, well, we're going to have to use Euler's formula to figure out the solutions that that imparts. 
So e to the rx, in this case, is going to be e to the negative 1 plus i times x. This is e to the negative x plus ix. That is e to the negative x times e to the ix. And then by Euler's formula, e to the ix can be rewritten. So this becomes e to the negative x times cosine x plus i times the sine of x. You distribute, and this turns into e to the negative x cosine x plus i e to the negative x times the sine of x. So we pick out the real and imaginary parts. The real part is e to the negative x cosine x. The imaginary part is e to the negative x sine x. And now we have three linearly independent solutions. Third order ODE, so we can construct the general solution out of these three. So y equals c1 plus c2 e to the negative x cosine x plus c3 e to the negative x sine x. And that would be our general solution. Okay. Let's do another. This one is going to be fifth derivative of y minus fourth derivative of y equals zero. So just some pre-processing that we can do immediately because this is a fifth order ODE and it's linear and it's homogeneous. We should expect to find five linearly independent solutions and then from those we can construct a general solution. So, characteristic equation just looks like r to the fifth minus r to the fourth equals zero. We can factor out r to the fourth now. This becomes r to the fourth times r minus one equals zero. So that gives us two roots one of which has a algebraic multiplicity of four, and one of which has an algebraic multiplicity of one. So we have r1 equals zero with an algebraic multiplicity of four, and we have r2 equals one with an algebraic multiplicity of one. Okay, so as always, we get a solution from this root. One of them is just e to the 0x, which is 1. And we get a solution from this root, which is e to the 1x. So we need three more. So if you want one more, you just keep multiplying by x. So y3 is just going to be x times 1. How do you get more? You just keep multiplying by x. <laughs> uh, so y4 is going to be x times x. And y5 is going to be x squared times x. You see, you just keep multiplying by x until you finally get as many um, functions as the multiplicity. Okay? And so then from there, we have five linearly independent solutions now. 
So the general solution is going to be C1 times 1 plus C2 times X plus C3 times X squared plus C4 times X to the third plus e, uh, um, C5 E to the X and that is our general solution. Now let's look at an initial value problem. So we have our initial value problem here. This ODE is going to be 2 third derivative of y minus 3 second derivative of y minus 2 first derivative of y equals 0. And we're going to have to give it some initial conditions, right? For a third order ODE, you need three initial conditions. One of them is going to be about y, the other is going to be about y prime, and the other is going to be about y prime prime. So y of 0 equals 1, y prime of 0 equals 0, and y prime prime of zero equals one. So all this together, all this information is our initial value problem. So as always, we're trying to find a particular solution of this ODE that satisfies these three conditions. Okay. So the first thing we ought to do is find the general solution of the ODE, and that can be accomplished by first finding the characteristic equation, 2r cubed minus 3r squared minus 2r equals 0. You can factor out an r and get 2r squared minus 3r minus 2 equals 0. Now, b squared minus 4ac is positive in this case, so this will have real roots, distinct real roots, in fact. Um, and when you were in high school, you probably learned how to factor one of these quadratics that doesn't have one as the leading coefficient, but it's easier to just use the quadratic formula. <laughs> okay, so we, we have one root, first of all. We have r1, which is zero. We also have 2r squared minus 3r minus 2 equals zero, and that we can use the quadratic formula on. So r equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So this turns into 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 16 is 25 divided by 4. So that would be 3 plus or minus 5 divided by 4, which turns into, let's see, if you say 3 plus 5, that's going to be 8 divided by 4, you get 2. And 3 minus 5, that's going to be negative 2. Divide by 4, you get negative 1 half. So we have two more distinct real roots.
All right, well, each of those gives rise to a single solution. We have y1, which is e to the 0x. Then we have y2, which is e to the 2x. And then we have y3, which is e to the negative 1 half x. The general solution is then going to be c1 times 1 plus c2 e to the 2x plus c3 e to the negative 1 half x. All right, so we're not done. We need to apply the initial conditions in order to get a particular solution. The initial conditions have y, but they also have y prime and y prime prime. So we're going to need at least two derivatives of this thing. So y prime is going to be 2c2 e to the 2x minus 1 half c3 e to the negative 1 half x. Then y prime prime is going to be 4c2 e to the 2x plus 1 fourth c3 e to the negative 1 half x. All right, so let's take a look at our initial conditions. I'm going to erase this part because we already have all the information we need from it. Our initial conditions say, let's see here, 1 equals y of 0. y of 0 is going to be c1 plus c2 plus c3. Then 0 equals y prime of 0. which is just going to be 2c2 minus 1 half c3. Then 1 is going to be 1 prime prime of 0. So that's going to be 4c2 plus 1 fourth c3. So now what we have here is a system of equations that we can solve for c1, c2, and c3. And that's exactly what we'll do. Uh, let's see. I'm going to write the general solution over here. And then erase what I have over there. So c1 plus c2 e to the 2x plus c3 e to the negative one half x. Okay, let's see here. I suppose the way that I'd like to solve this is by multiplying this second equation by two. So if we do that, we'll get c1 plus c2 plus c3 equals one and 4c2 minus c3 equals 0, and 4c2 plus 1 fourth c3 equals 1. Now if you take this equation and subtract this one, what you're going to get is 5 fourths, c3 equals 1, which makes it pretty clear that c3 is going to be 4 fifths. Okay, so then you put that back into the second equation, you get 4c2 minus 4 fifths equals 0. So 4c2 
equals four fifths, and therefore C2 equals one fifth. All right, and then finally, if C1 and C2 and C3 together make one, and C2 is one fifth, and C3 is four fifths, that means C1 is going to have to be zero. Therefore, the particular solution that solves our initial value problem is y equals zero plus one fifth e to the two x plus four fifths e to the negative one half x. And that is our answer. Okay. So to summarize, solving a higher order linear homogeneous ODEs with constant coefficients is not really that much different from doing it for second order ones. You just have to find the characteristic equation, find the solutions that the characteristic equation generates, and then put those together in the general solution. And then if you have an initial value problem, you have a system of equations to solve, but that's fine. That's something that isn't too hard if you take a moment to think about it. So that's all for this time. See you in the next one.